Recently, I designed an RC car completely from scratch. In this video, it's going to be all about refining and bringing out the potential of this design. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. When it comes to custom parts for your projects, PCBWay is a go-to solution. They offer a broad range of services like PCB prototyping, CNC machining, and 3D printing, all at affordable rates and with quick turnaround times. One of the reoccurring things I realized throughout this project is how weak the PLA plastic is which makes up pretty much the entire car. By using PCBWay's services, I can have my parts metal 3D printed or CNC machined. Now, back to the video. The first thing that I want to do to this car is fix this issue. A bunch of people in the comments helped out and explained that this is called cogging. It happens when motors can't find what part of the revolution they're on. There are two ways to solve this issue. Increase the mechanical advantage to give the motor more torque over the system, or buy a lower KV rated motor designed to have more torque to begin with. I designed a gear reduction train using CAD which is basically just a 1 to 2 ratio 3 times in a row. I cut out the old motor clip and then glued the gear train onto the car. Another thing I addressed were the wheels. In the last video, they flew off the rims because I forgot to glue them on. Now that that's all taken care of, it was time to see if the new setup would work. And as to be expected, it did not work. This would be the first of a whole lot of failed iterations of this car. The reason why the gearbox failed is because the shafts weren't keyed, and the CA glue wasn't strong enough to bind the gears under the high torque. I figured I'd give the gear train another chance, but I was skeptical. This time it did slightly better, but after giving it any throttle, it once again just died. Basically, I would have to make a key for every single one of these axles in here. And these are kind of like in the middle of the shaft and I'd have to make a whole thing. I had some ideas for that, but it's a complicated process with a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that can go wrong. So I'm like, what would be better doing all of that work and effort for something that could be really prone to failure? Or do we try and find another solution to this that isn't so uh, whatever this is. As well as grabbing a new motor with a lower KV, I ordered some larger 1 8 scale tires. The current tires didn't allow much clearance amongst other issues. A new motor meant a new rear chassis to fit it. This meant I had to remove and transfer all of the hardware off of the old one and then onto the new one. Using the same method as before, I used clips to hold the motor on so that it could be easily removed. After checking the motor, retightening the bolts, and attaching the new wheels, the car was ready to be properly driven. Got the car all nicely set up everything's finally working now hopefully i got the gopro on it we'll get some first person footage of this thing um the goal is to basically drive this thing until it breaks um and see what breaks and then we'll upgrade it from there i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing going around we got this nice big empty parking lot all to ourselves which is gonna be great let's do it a friendly reminder to always charge your batteries before you drive out to the location that you want to do all your filming and stuff because um things out of juice already because I, I <laughs> forgot to charge it after doing all the testing after getting that all charged back up i went back to the same spot and started to do some more testing
Wheel came off. <laughs> Looks like it broke off that little thing that I've been working on, the little axle cap thing. We knew that that was gonna be a weak point, but what can you do? Wheel rolled all the way over here. I gotta go find it now. Thing was ripping though. So another front axle redesign. There we are. Hello. All that pushing from the sides from really tight corners and stuff. That's kind of what did it in there, I think. Cause like that sideways force while it's rotating. Cause I mean, it just broke along the layer lines. The wheel has to sit in closer. And the reason why I had to do this whole thing where I had to space it out a bunch is because of the geometry of this uh, control arm. Cause this setup was made for the old wheels that I had on this thing. So I was trying to avoid doing this by making this whole configuration, but I guess there's no avoiding it. I'm gonna have to change the geometry of the steering hubs, I think, just to make the control arm link like over here instead of here so that the rims aren't hitting this guy. Also where it skidded up against the bottom here, didn't even do too much damage at all. Just scraped up the end of the screw a little bit. So yeah, gonna redesign that now. With the new geometry for the front wheel hubs looking good and everything fitting correctly, I took it back out to another location to do some more testing. was a pretty cool breakdown stuff went flying everywhere broke some more stuff this time there were two things poor structural rigidity of the rear wheel hub and yet again i forgot to glue the wheels onto the rims jumping right back into cad here i did yet another redesign beefing up the arms that hold the axle socket i once again transferred all the hardware off of the old rear wheel hubs and onto the new setup around this time some new suspension arrived this was another fundamental issue that I wanted to fix since last video, because the suspension just needed to be a bit stiffer. Another little side note, I just tried to put on the new suspension. It's not the exact same size, I, I thought that it was. So, these were just 1 16th scale shocks that I had lying around, and this car is like 1 8th scale, it's massive. So, these are super disproportionate. These are 1 10th scale 62 millimeter shocks, I think. And they're a lot stiffer, especially when you crank this thing all the way up. But that means reprinting, redesigning all of the lower arms for left, right, back, and left, right, um, bottom, front. So yeah, add it to the list. Here's the new shock setup working as planned. We got the new lower suspension arm on there to offset the different geometry. Everything still works good. It's way stiffer, which is great. Exactly what we needed. Yeah, good stuff. All right, on to the next thing. axle in there do you see how it's broken just popped this piece right off of it all right i gotta reprint those stronger so the axle just shattered in half on that test uh the torque from that motor is just insane this is a little bit tight now with the new suspension geometry it has no like wiggle room at all it's very locked in so we want to make those a little bit smaller in length also the wheels are pretty towed in so we're gonna make these guys a little bit shorter. Um, yeah, it's looking more promising now. Things are going well. I adjusted the tolerances of those parts and reprinted them. 
I'm thinking that this thing is getting really close to where I'm going to be happy with it now. And that said, it's time to go test this thing with all the new parts. That was a really bad hit. Broke the um, front chassis right here. I don't really know how I can really beef this thing up like much more than it already is. Like this thing is pretty chunky. So I think that this comes down to print settings, but also maybe switching to a stronger filament because everything on this car is printed in PLA right now. Maybe if I switched up to PETG or for some of the more structurally crucial parts using something like nylon or carbon fiber. Yeah, but that, that was a pretty bad hit. It just kind of caught an edge and flipped because these wheels are pretty grippy. And now that I'm using these shocks, it's a little higher up and the center of gravity is a bit higher. So I think I'm gonna glue it back together just to reprint this entire thing and transfer all the hardware. And with that, I think we're gonna call it for this project. This thing has gone through so many designs. It's actually insane. I've probably put in over a hundred hours of work on this car and there's a lot of stuff that I've done to this that I haven't filmed just because there's way too much of it. Or there's stuff that I have filmed that I just haven't put in this video. This thing is crazy fast with the new motor specifically. Um, I've yet to actually give it full throttle because the thing just has so much power that every single time I get close, it just rips it to pieces. That being said though, most of the things that are breaking now are just consistent structural failures and not really just like poorly designed pieces and stuff. Meaning like, this entire car is made of PLA, right? To really make this thing stronger and to be more like any other RC car, it's gotta be made of something that isn't PLA plastic. So what I'm thinking, I'm gonna release the files for this thing on Thingiverse as well as Onshape so that those who don't have Onshape can have the files, but people with Onshape can actually mess around with all of the different tolerances and stuff and make things work for their specifications. And then the next video, my plan is to do an in-depth build guide sort of thing with much stronger parts. Um, some of them will be hopefully metal 3D printed. Some of them will be made of nylon or carbon fiber or PETG or, you know, the stronger stuff. And then we'll see if this thing can really like, really get moving. But I mean, I'm really happy with this. It's been like a few months now since I started this project and I'm happy to be thinking I'm done with it and moving on. I mean, there's always more that can be done. It could always be better. It could always be faster. It could always be more reliable. But I mean, with where it's at, I'm pretty happy. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and um, see you in the next one.